I'm going to go over the purpose of the National Space Council, the highlights of their first meeting, and how it will affect NASA, SpaceX, and Blue Origin. On Thursday, October 5th, the National Space Council had their first meeting, and it included representatives from Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Orbital ATK, SpaceX, Blue Origin, and the Sierra Nevada Corporation. Did the meeting give any clues on NASA's new direction in space exploration? Does this new direction affect SpaceX and Blue Origin? Let's find out. Welcome to NeoScribe, research in the future for you so you don't have to. When we think of the US government spending on space, we think of NASA, right? Perhaps the DoD as well? But NASA is just a slice of the pie of the total U.S. space budget. There are eight government agencies that spend money on space, and NASA isn't necessarily the biggest spender. This chart is from spacefoundation.org. It has old data from 2009, but it perfectly illustrates that the United States spends a lot more money on space than you think. The biggest spender in 2009 was the DoD, spending $26 billion. Then came NASA at $17 billion followed by the National Reconnaissance Office at $15 billion. In 2009, the U.S. spent over $64 billion as a whole on space for a variety of purposes, largely involving satellites and supporting the DoD and intelligence agencies like the CIA. With that in mind, President Trump re-established the National Space Council so that all the agencies are on the same page and not off doing their own thing. Whether this is good for space exploration or not remains to be seen, but watching the National Space Council's first meeting today, it seems like it is going to be a good thing. If you're enjoying your journey so far, don't forget to leave a like. Okay, back to the video. So what were the big takeaways from the meeting? First is that based on Vice President Mike Pence's speech, NASA will be focusing on going back to the moon. Pence said, we will return American astronauts to the moon, not only to leave behind footprints and flags, but to build the foundation we need to send Americans to Mars and beyond. The moon will be a stepping stone, a training ground, a venue to strengthen our commercial and international partnerships as we refocus America's space program towards human space exploration." End quote. It's important to highlight that he says focusing on the moon will be a venue to strengthen our commercial partners. See, that opens up the possibility to contract SpaceX to deliver cargo to the moon using the BFR, which is currently in development. If you're interested in learning more about SpaceX's BFR, there's a link to my video in the description. That also opens up the possibility for NASA to help fund Blue Origin's Blue Moon Lander, which already has been proposed to NASA. If you want to learn more about Blue Origin and the Blue Moon Lander, I will have a video out about that in the next few days, so you will want to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out. So, with Vice President Pence announcing our return to the moon, we now join the new space race to the moon. The US joins Russia, China, Japan, and India who all want to send astronauts to the moon in the coming decades. Another big takeaway from the meeting is that Vice President Pence and the Council has tasked NASA to work with the Office of Management and Budget to provide the President with a recommended plan on how we will return to the moon. NASA has 45 days to come up with the plan, which will fall on November 19th. I can't wait to see the details of the plan and see if it involves working with SpaceX or Blue Origin. Another highlight is that the Council was very receptive in the idea of deregulating a lot of space regulation that were put in place during the Apollo era. This request came from SpaceX saying that current regulation disrupts the, the rapid cadence of launches. So moving on, the last big takeaway came from the National Security Panel voicing concerns that adversaries of the United States are weaponizing space, that the United States needs to focus on, on the space domain regarding national security. An example of weaponizing space are anti-satellite weapons or ASATs. ASATs are space weapons designed to incapacitate or destroy satellites for strategic military purposes. Both China and Russia have successfully deployed these kinds of weapons in the past. The sentiment of the National Security Panel was that the U.S. needs to dominate in its space presence in order to deter any possible attacks on U.S. based satellites and interests, and the council seemed very receptive of their concerns. I found that part of the meeting particularly interesting, and I will definitely research more about ASATs and put a video out on that in the future. So after the meeting, 
the acting NASA administrator Robert Lightfoot had a press statement which reconfirmed everything on the meeting and the direction of NASA moving forward. He said, NASA has been directed to develop a plan for an innovative and, sub and a sustainable program of exploration with commercial and international partners to enable human expansion across the solar system, returning humans to the moon for long-term exploration and utilization, followed by human missions to Mars and other destinations. An important clue here is that he said we're going to return to the moon for long-term exploration and utilization. In order to have long-term exploration and utilization, you need to have a moon base, right? Wouldn't that be awesome to have a moon base? Elon Musk thinks so too. It's 2017. I mean, we should have a lunar base by now. What the hell's going on? If you're wondering what's all the fuss about going back to the moon, why why not go straight to Mars? The real reason in my opinion is money. There is a figurative lunar gold rush happening and the United States wants in. Lightfoot said, among new areas, we will work with industry and the international community on robotic lunar landers that explore the nature of the moon and its resources such as water. There's a link to my video about the lunar gold rush in the description if you want to learn more. Lightfoot went on to say that NASA will not not be pursuing a manned asteroid mission. That was a mission to send astronauts to an asteroid, a mission that would cost an estimated more than $2.6 billion. Although I think that would be awesome, I think that we should be focusing on building a moon base instead. Lightfoot also said that he has had a lot of conversations with the council and there are a lot of space initiatives involving a long-term presence on the moon, such as a space station that would orbit the moon, and it that is also known as the Deep Space Gateway. He also went on to say that the direction builds on the hard work we have already been doing on the Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft. Our efforts to enable our commercial partners and work with our international partners in low Earth orbit at the International Space Station, end quote. The important thing here is that NASA will continue its commitment to the Space Launch System and Orion spacecraft. I'm not surprised here because they're already so deep in development with the um, Space Launch System which will have its first test flight in 2019. With that said, I do not believe NASA will have anything to do with funding SpaceX's BFR. My personal theory is that Elon Musk knew that this was the direction NASA was going to take and I think it was at, at that realization that he decided that he needed to downsize the interplanetary transport system because he wouldn't get help from NASA. It actually makes sense that NASA would want to be at the forefront of space exploration. I mean, that's their whole purpose. They don't want to contract out everything to companies. Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson explains this sentiment well. Evaluation. What did SpaceX do? Were they leading the space frontier? No, they're hauling cargo back and forth to the space station. Well, NASA should never have been in that business. You don't need astronauts who are highly trained professional spacefarers to be hauling goods back and forth to space. Get SpaceX to do it. The post office, they don't have their own planes, or if they do, it's for trivial things. If they want to move mail across the country, they rent space in the belly of Delta Airlines or, whom, or Mer whomever. The corporation will do it more efficiently, and uh, they don't have to worry about the business model for that. Let somebody else do it. But if you want to move the frontier to a new place, you need the government, especially where space is involved. And once the, once the maps are drawn and the risks are established, then you could farm that off to space, to industry. And that's what, should, like I said, should have been happening decades ago. All right, so lastly, Lightfoot said, we have already been planning missions to cis lunar space beginning with exploration mission two. And with the upcoming budget process, we will look to solidify this work with our new goals in place, end quote. The exploration mission two will be launched by the space launch system, sending four astronauts to orbit, four astronauts to orbit the moon and deliver the first element of the deep space gateway. I think that would be an awesome mission and I can't wait to see it happen. All in all, I think Vice President Pence and the National Space Council seems like they have a sense of urgency behind refocusing the United States space policy and I can't wait to see how everything plays out. But I want to hear from you. Do you think that the National Space Council is a good thing or do you think that it will actually add another layer of bureaucracy and do more harm than good? Comment below. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like. And if you're interested in seeing more videos covering NASA's new direction in more detail, if you're interested in space exploration, robotics, and all things future, then join the Neoscribe tribe and subscribe. I am Neoscribe, and this is the end of our journey.